It's a dysfunctional, centralized system that is failing. Things are going so well, it's kind of frightening. If you want to live in a Bitcoin-only world, you can design it yourself. You can live in a Bitcoin-only world today. It's better to build something than to fight something. And it's actually nice of the central bank system to fight Bitcoin because they give it their energy and their time. They buy some shitcoin because they still didn't get over their own ego and they still think that they are smarter than the neighbor who bought Bitcoin. It's a very, very clear statement by the financial giants of the world that Bitcoin is a real thing. It lies to you. It makes you believe that your stocks go up when they're actually flat, that you are smart for buying the house when it's actually flat. The real challenge is not to get out of the rat race. The real challenge is what are you going to do with your life afterwards? Some people are starting to figure out that there is a way to live your life that is not driven by the inflation machine. I saw your talk at Bitcoin Prague about the seven rebellion lessons or something like that uh, of the Eastern European Revolution. Mm -hmm. And what I thought is like, is that the best time to compare Bitcoin with the Bitcoin Revolution? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's like from the past, we can learn maybe a little bit of, uh, of Bitcoin and maybe then get to the future, what will happen the next like five, 10, 20 years. Uh, and that's how I wanted to structure today's podcast. So maybe like, what can we learn from the past? Is that time frame the best time to compare the Bitcoin revolution to? It's, it's one time frame, right? It's one time frame that we know a lot about. Um, and it's one time frame that, that makes a lot of sense to talk about in Prague. Um, there is no perfect comparison. Uh, mm -hmm. There's just small um, or m maybe large, um, you know, similarities. So one thing that I think is, is, is funny is numbers. When, in 1980, when um, Solidarność was founded, before it was even founded, so that would be the, the, the Polish Union, Free Union, the funny thing about, about the, the revolution um, and the rebellion against, against uh, Soviet Russia and the Soviet Union is that the Soviet Union was supposed to be a workers' paradise, but the, the people who brought it down was actually the workers. The actual first workers' revolution was in 1989. And in 1980, the workers began with very modest stuff like um, higher wages, better maternity leave, more security, very, very basic stuff. And they had a list of, of demands. And you, now I ask you, do you know how many demands they had? Uh, I have no clue. 21. 21 of course oh of course it was 21 and so they had 21 demands and then and then they were um uh after a couple of, of weeks uh the you know the, the polish state came back with a police state and for almost nine years they were illegal so it was illegal it took them nine years um but it's all started in the in the lenin in the lenin shipyard in uh, what is today gdansk um german name is danzig right mm. so And and I I just I bought a book about nine, 1989 by Victor Sebastian, who is a brilliant uh, historian, a British guy whose family fled from from Hungary, uh, and I bought that in Budapest, and I just read it in two days, and it was a brilliant you know um, overview of what happened not in Russia but in Eastern Europe, and there are some similarities. So for example. Um, one similarity would be that, uh, that the core of the system, so that would be Moscow, was not interested in keeping the satellites anymore. Mm. They, they were interested in keeping their stuff, but they, are, they thought that they could reform the Soviet Union in a way where, where they would keep, stay in power. No, and, and at the same time, the people running the rebellions in, 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 in Hungary, in, um, in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, um, they didn't think about you know bringing down the power they just wanted like a little bit more rights they wanted to make their lives a little bit better um and it all ended up with you know eastern germany with the wall coming down and then this, afterwards it looks like a foregone conclusion right but it wasn't it was never um and i think that when i started my work on this i thought that we could learn something from like the rebellion and the revolution But now I think what we actually can learn is that, you know, what's really important is, and this is also one of the lessons that Václav Havel talked about, what's important is that you have an alternative, that you have something to strive for, that you have um, a, a life that you want to live and somewhere where you want to go. And I think that in the, in the, when, when you compare it to what we have today, the fiat system, let's call it a fiat system, whatever, it's, it's, a, it's a dysfunctional, centralized system that that is failing basically that's and that was this what was the soviet union was as well um 
you need some alternative. So in the in, in the case of Eastern Europe, the alternative was Western Europe. Mm. In the case of so, like classic socialism, the alternative was capitalism. Today, it's a little bit less clear. And without Bitcoin, I don't think we would have an alternative. But with Bitcoin, we can slowly see an alternative emerging and we can see it emerging all around us within this very, very small Bitcoin space. And I think it's important to know that it's very, still very small. Mm. It's not early. So Bitcoin is 15 years now. It's not early, but it's still small. Um, but I can see the alternative within the Bitcoin space. I can see it within the... the and, and, and then, of course, like in practice, I can see it with, for example, like Michael Saylor does, right? He does the same thing that many people do on a personal level. Um, they put their, their, their savings into Bitcoin. He does the same thing in, um, in, on, on the corporate level, right? And now the playbook is playing out and there's more companies doing it and they're successful. Um, it's actually, you know, things are going so well, it's kind of frightening almost. Is, is, is there a possibility that uh, Bitcoin at some point goes too fast? I thought about that when, when we really hit like a, a, a point where Bitcoin, the price goes so parabolic. Can it, can this be something uh, frightening for, for Bitcoin and the uh, overall mission? Yes, I think it, I mean, it's, it's frightening when it goes up and it's frightening when it goes down. That's the volatility. Um, and when there is, when there is um, exponential growth, it's always, it, it always comes down, right? Um, That's why I'm very interested in, in the whole power law thing. I, I, it's hard to talk about quote unquote price models because, because you know, there is this, this, all your models are going to be destroyed and, you know, some models are used, uh, some old models are wrong and some are useful. I, I can see that, right? But, but I like, like the idea of having something that works as a, um, um, almost A, a digital organic life form because because that's what it is it's it's a, it's a network right and the network is 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 composed of the nodes but the nodes in bitcoin is not just the little computers it's us mm. right um and it would make sense for for a system that is adopted by by human beings um to be to to be growing like something out of nature that's the whole power law idea um and as long as the power law thing is not invalidated i think it's a very interesting thing to look at um and it, if it gets invalidated then we can do something else right um and and the one thing about the power law is that it, it also shows the path of least resistance and the path of least resistance is not you know jumping from from eight seventy thousand to seven million and then just saying okay that's it now it's not seven million right that's not the, the path of least resistance the path of least resistance is slow growth maybe a little bubble then coming back down you know as a bitcoin it's interesting you know it goes up to 300 percent and then it comes down 70 percent um and and most people are still in the green um but but like uh people who are not have never heard about bitcoin will will pity you will say ah you poor boy did you lose everything are you okay you know do you want a soup um yeah so 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 i don't like i think i'm very intrigued with the power law thing because i think it's the more natural um slow uh, pr slow progression is actually a good thing and the power law uses the us dollar to measure things like yes. it, it, it's it's kind of like uh denominated in the us dollars do you think that the us dollar then survives uh, or maybe the power law then breaks when when the fiat system uh breaks or does the fiat system never break It, I don't like if it if it breaks if it disappears so be it um, I'm not gonna you know cry about it but I, I also I think it's not it's not helpful to think in these terms I do think that but you know, when the when the Soviet Union came down you know the government still existed Many people, actually many people were super disappointed because the same people who were in power during the Soviet times were still in power, you know. Um, the, li the lives of the people didn't immediately get better. Um, so so it, it, took, it took time, right? And of course, it's an imperfect comparison, but um, it's, it's I, 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 I still have a hard time thinking that you know bitcoin will be the only money that we use maybe maybe you know i'm not going to complain um but i don't I, i still like i factor in the fiat system i factor it in into my thinking it's part of the 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 organizational structure of governments um they will have to adopt to bitcoin um there is a new a new um you know counterweight in town that they will have to deal with 
mm. which is positive. And I think that anybody who is who who knows anything about monetary economics, even within a central bank, is going to be happy about that. So they are going to embrace it because because it's it's they don't know any other way out. You know, there is for for, for our monetary system today, the only way out is 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 complete disaster. Um, so, so it's good to have something that 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 uh, that that you know can absorb all the the, the the debt, all the money printing. You know, something that that can work as a counterweight to the system. But it's for me, it technically it's possible that we that, that we just get rid of the, the the legacy central banking system, and and it might even be desirable. But it's very hard for me to to like picture it. It's interesting because some people say like, oh, Bitcoin can only, like there are a lot of camps in, inside of Bitcoin. Like some are like, uh, if, if Bitcoin does not uh, replace the central banking system, then Bitcoin was not successful. Then some people say like, oh, the central banking system will always be there, but Bitcoin can be successful even without that. Like if, if Bitcoin does not replace the central banking system completely, then the central banking system still solves a problem that Bitcoin cannot solve. Hmm. Like, like, even with dictators in power, even with with laws, you cannot force you cannot force complete idiocracy, um, idiocy. You cannot force complete idiocy onto the people forever. You can do it for a while, right? Like like they did in the beginning of the Soviet Union. You know they had no prices, ghost plan, and all, all the the very very bad you know planning economy stuff. They really quickly realized that that is a stupid idea, and they they absolutely knew that the whole a uh, Marxist Leninist social structure is complete nonsense at the like 70s, 80s, right? They started actually using it against their enemies, right? To subvert mm -hmm. the enemy with the same nonsense. Um, but it's, it's, if like uh, Bitcoin hasn't failed if, if, if there is still central banking because there's central banking today and Bitcoin hasn't failed, right? So it's like, there's no, this is all a process. People need to stop thinking in, 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 in events, you know, there's like, that's, that's why, that's why people get, get very, 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 um, you know, unhappy in marriages because, because there's people who think that marriage is an event, you know, that you have a wedding. No, the wedding is the event, but the marriage is the process. And the, the wedding is one day and the marriage should be like 50 years. Mm. Right, and that's the same thing. Same thing with Bitcoin. It's not. There's no if one day event where you you go to sleep and next day it's a Bitcoin only world. That's not how it works. If you want to live in a Bitcoin only world, you can design it yourself. You can live in a Bitcoin only world today, um, and some people do that, and I applaud them. It's it's an amazing thing. How does is Bitcoin now already successful? Like when we look at uh, Bitcoin is uh, here and it's an alternative, it's this exit valve that we already have. We can already live in kind of a Bitcoin only world depending on, on where you look at it, but you can move somewhere. You don't have to pay taxes for Bitcoin depending on where you live. Is, is, it, is it already successful and now it's just getting more success, like it just wins more wins over time. So it kind of Bitcoin is already has already won in actual sense, not only the meme. <laughs> It depends on your definition of winning, exactly, right? It has it has one as in so far as that it's it's a global phenomenon that is adopted by millions of people around the world. It's a global brand. Yeah, it's on your T-shirt, right? Yeah. Why is it on your T-shirt? Because it's a positive global brand that anybody can use for marketing reasons, right? Um, of course, you, if you if you if you cannot back it up with some you know Bitcoin related stuff that you do, content technologies you use, then it's worthless. But it, it's a global brand. Like people will know about it, even if they have negative feelings about it, even you know, even if they hate it, they they, they you know they put their energy into hating it, right? Mm. Um, that the central banks write about it all the time. That the, the financial media is, is completely obsessed with it, and it's not even like a, at the next step of the way yet, right? The bull market is basically just starting. So, and and then of course there's the practical stuff. I can go anywhere in the world right now and I can, you know, um, use Bitcoin to get stuff. I'm not talking about buying stuff in Bitcoin. I'm talking about changing Bitcoin to the local fiat currency and using the local fiat currency. I can meet Bitcoiners all around the world. I think Bitcoin is, is, the, is an amazing social network, right? Um, and, and I can meet Bitcoiners all around the world and all of them will be happy to take my sats and pay for my beer. Right, mm. I can, I can imagine the the alternative, especially when you look at at at, at people, you know, fleeing Eastern Germany to Western Germany, or people fleeing the Ukraine for for Western Europe, and that's only two years ago. You know, mm. how, how many people could take their houses? 
how's your real estate investment going, right? And and it's not funny because it's a war, but it's a re it's reality. Um, and even if you if you have your money in gold, yes, you can take a kilo or two. Yeah, you can take your you, know, you can take your expensive car. You can take maybe some some art, right? Um, but nothing compares to what you can do with Bitcoin. It's 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 a completely groundbreaking uh, groundbreaking technology. It took me from 2013 to 2020 to even accept that, right? There's like, like it's it's so new that that there is a there is even if you if you already know about the problems of fiat money about the problems of inflation, you can still have lots of resistance. Um, and we always talk about how you know you have to get over your ego. Sometimes you have to get over your ego more than once. <laughs> <laughs> um and 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 yeah and then that's why so many people after they get it finally uh, it all goes very quick with them right mm. it was very quick for me right so now i do bitcoin content all the day all every day all day long for, from 2013 to 2020 you did uh in traditional finance like you were a financial journalist yes so i was working at the newspaper die presse classical liberal <coughs> newspaper in in in, in austria mm. um it's very old you know ludwig Hormis wrote for it mm. but also karl marx oh so so yeah very open um but but i was there and yeah so so i i like i got into financial journalism because of inflation and because of fiat money that maybe that's an interesting story so i got into it because i i i lived in argentina for a year in 2008 i saw inflation i saw the problems um and then when the the, the euro crisis started in 2010 um when greece had to be bailed out and basically you know the the, the whole idea of the euro as a hard currency was was completely destroyed um i was panicking so I, I would run to the bank and get gold, right? But what I didn't realize back then is that, you know, these things take a long time. And there's not going to be, like, inflation did not hit immediately. Mm. It took until 2022, almost, um, after the pandemic, to really, to really hit the streets. And now it's only beginning. So it's, now, we, we, now we are at the point where Argentina was in 2008, some, some, something like that, right? So, but I got into, so I saw the problems um, and I got into gold and I, I, I recreated or re-engineered re what I did with my gold buying. Um, and I got into Austrian economics and all that stuff. And and I just, you know, grew up in the whole crisis. You know, there was Zero Hedge and Twitter and all that stuff. I, but there was, but there was no Bitcoin content back then, not really. Um, and, and I was too quick to get into the gold story. And then I had this mental block. So first, you know, you think fiat money is going to go, going to go away and we're going to do gold again. And then you think the gold standard is the, the next step. And then you realize, but the gold standard is stupid. <laughs> um, and actually it's better to, and this is interesting. This is the free gold theory. It's something that I put a lot of work into. Um, it's a theory that also is, is something that central bankers understand is that you, you, you separate the roles of money. You do you do fiat money for every everyday transactions and also mm. unit of account most of the time. And you take gold as a store of value. When you live in Argentina, you understand immediately because you take the peso for every day and for unit of account and you take the dollar for store of value, right? But when you live in the dollar world and the euro world, you don't have another fiat currency as a store of value. So you have to look for gold maybe. That was the idea. That was also what I used and actually worked pretty well as a store of value to be, to be fair, right? Um, but Bitcoin, of course, technically is a lot better. It just took me a couple of years to understand that. And once I understood it, um, I just had to you know, face the fact that I could have, you know, like, like every Bitcoin, <laughs> we, we could have bought much more, much sooner. Um, so now instead of, you know, um, sitting on an island counting my Bitcoin, I'm sitting here talking to you and it's also, it's fine. I, I'm glad you're talking to me <laughs> and you're not an OG somewhere in an island. Um, but this is interesting because a lot of people already use Bitcoin that way. Like they use Bitcoin as the store of value. Yes. And then uh, either they have an income and then they divide it like, okay, 80% or 80% goes to my bills and 20% to my Bitcoin wealth. Uh, but or, or they have actually Bitcoin and then they take something out of that. So is that the... Is that also like how it could be? I think Sailor also talks about that, that we have like our digital assets, we have Bitcoin, and then we have our US, US dollars or whatever. 
uh, how they will call it, maybe also CBC or something like that. And this is kind of then the future where we use the, the, the fiat money for just for transacting, for paying our taxes on, and, and for that. And then we have Bitcoin. But the thing that I have a really hard time wrapping my head around, if everyone accepts Bitcoin as the main store of value, and we have even now Bitcoiners that are like, I oh, know I want to pay in Bitcoin and, and I want to have like my, my, I want to get paid in Bitcoin. This is already like slowly happening. It's it's not major, but what's when like 4% or 5% of the population says like, no, I, I want Bitcoin. Like so that's, only so, me in Bitcoin. So that's the point, the point. So when you talk to Sailor today, and I think he's right, when you talk to him today and you say, we want to you know bring down the central banking system, we want to revolutionize the world, blah, blah, blah. He says, no, you know? Let's not put too much pressure onto Bitcoin. Let's not put too much baggage onto Bitcoin. And also, if you really want to bring down something, why would you, you know, make a podcast about it, right? Why, why, you're not going to like, if if you want to burn down a village, you're not going to run there and, and show them the fire and then say, that's like his, his, his uh, uh, example. We don't want to burn down anything. We want to build something better, something something new, right? And this is also something that I learned with with gold a little bit, and also from the uh, from the 1989 revolution in Eastern Europe, um, the people they didn't say, "I want to end the German Democratic Republic," right? I want to end, like I want to end. The, of course, they wanted to end the Stasi, but they didn't say it, right? They said, "How about we can go to West Berlin for an hour," right? So they so they they open and then they opened the wall. And now today, everybody thinks, you know, the opening of the war was the end. It wasn't the end. You know, the, the, the Eastern Bloc still existed for years. Mm. Um, and people still thought, you know, now it's okay. It's just not going to be like before we had the war, you know. Um, it's a process. Because, and, and then, of course, you only know the, the, end, the end result of it. And is the end result possibly that, you know, the whole world runs on a Bitcoin standard and we use Bitcoin as, as, a, as a denominator? It's, it is possible. Yes, absolutely possible. It's just that it's it's it, I like within the time frame that I think you know um, you had you had the brilliant guy Retoshi on your podcast. He's a science fiction author. He thinks in a very very long time frame. Mm. My time frame is a little bit shorter, you know. So I think in a in a time frame of maybe ten to twenty years. So do we see? Do I think that in twenty years we won't have fiat currencies? No, mm. I think we will still have fiat currencies. Yeah. I think we might have CBDCs and whatever. The question, the next question is: Do you use your energy to fight that, or do you use your energy to build something? And I think that the message that Sailor is sending, and also Jeff Booth, and I think they're right. It's better to build something than to fight something. And it's actually nice of the central bank system to fight Bitcoin. You know, the the, the Europeans do it uh, because they give it their energy and their time. Um, but is it possible that it ends up in a way where, you know, the, the wall comes down and then the, the evil empire collapses? Yes, absolutely. And I won't, you know, I won't be crying about it, but I'm not going to, um, you know, make that my life's mission. Is the ETF, uh, the, the small wall that, that opened up or maybe the El Salvador buy, what, what, what would you No, the ETF compare? is Perestroika. So, you know, Perestroika in Glasnost? Have no. you heard about so then in in the, the the thing is that what like in this this very crude picture then you know we have the, you have the 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 center and the center would be for the USSR would be Moscow and for for the fiat world would be Washington right mm. and and so what what the USSR did under Gorbachev in the 1980s end of the 1980s is they they revo reforms they wanted to make it more livable there you know and Perestroika and Glasnost are the words that he used for the opening up of the of the Soviet Union to the world right he wanted to import stuff that people wanted not just stuff but like ideas and concepts and 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 and, and bring them to work and that's basically what the ETF is it's 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 the centralized fiat money Wall Street system saying well if we cannot beat it let's join it mm. right um and it's smart it's from their perspective because when you look at the uh, you talked about investments right and, and and store of value what what do we do we buy houses we buy we buy art we buy uh, other forms of real estate you know we buy stock portfolios and we buy gold right and we all buy it for one reason only store of value that's why we buy it. We don't buy it because we're all speculators. We, we're not, you know, um, we buy it for store value. So uh, companies like BlackRock have been, you know, have gotten to an enormous size because they they, they have solutions for this need for store value. Now, Bitcoin challenges this and they have two options. 
Option A is we ignore it. Option B is we, we, we do the same thing that we did with, with stocks and other, other assets, which is put them in an ETF wrapper. And we can't, we don't, we can't stop you um, investing into Bitcoin, but we'd rather have you invest your money with us, mm. right? Um, and also for, for BlackRock, it's, there's the other story about the gold ETF because um, BlackRock to this day only has the second biggest gold ETF, right? Um, and the biggest gold ETF is State Street because they were the ones who did the work. When, when the gold ETF was founded into uh, like launched in 2004, it's, it, it took years to come up with that because they needed to you know talk to the regulators and tell them how they're gonna do it and why it's important and why it's they did the same thing that they did with the ETF for, for Bitcoin they did with the gold ETF but because they were not the first BlackRock wasn't the first their their ETF is not the biggest uh, and I I don't think that you know. Whenever Larry think you know gets up in the morning, I think he's a happy man. But I think that for for like a split second, he thinks about BlackRock not having the biggest gold ETF, and it makes <laughs> him a little bit sad, right? So they needed to be like uh, within the first batch because they knew even if there is eleven ETFs, as long as BlackRock is leading the charge, people are gonna buy the BlackRock thing, and they're right. Uh, it's it, it's fascinating for me. Uh, and when we uh, talk now about uh, the fiat system and we say like, okay, fiat system will uh, will survive at least uh, the next 20 years, I even think like I will not outlive the fiat system. I think uh, as long as I'm here, the fiat system will be in some sort of sense here. Um, but then there's a whole, as you said, store of value side. And there's real estate, there's stocks, there's so many other things. And I was in stocks before. And, and the one thing that I got uh, forgot about uh, the mention in, in the podcast that I did before with you is that I was actually in plans before I discovered Bitcoin to make my first real estate investment. Of I was, course. I, of, of, <laughs> Obviously. Of, of, of course I was. You had, you had like 200 euros in stocks. Now it's time to buy real estate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, Bitcoin actually prevented that. And Bitcoin forced me to, or forced me, or incentivized me to not have my stock investment anymore. So without Bitcoin, I would have now a stock portfolio and then real estate in portfolio and maybe maybe a small gold portfolio. I don't know. Uh, but it's I, important to understand that you, that would be still be better than 95% of the population because they don't have a portfolio. They have their money in savings accounts or even worse, in some scam. Mm. There's lots of scams, right? People buy scams. People love their scams for some reason um, because of f f uh, greed, you know. And you also have this 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 phenomenon that you know um, you, you see this in Bitcoin as well with crypto. So uh, people people will be talking about Bitcoin for years, right? And hear about it and then see you know maybe you know, it's going up from ten thousand to twenty thousand to sixty thousand, right? And they're like, ah shit, maybe maybe my neighbor was right, you know? Maybe 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 I should have gotten to Bitcoin. And then they get their first you know whatever Bin Bitfinex account, and what do they do? They buy some shitcoin. Why? Because they still didn't get over their own ego and they still think that they are smarter than the neighbor who bought Bitcoin, <laughs> right? And they do the same thing with stocks. They don't buy Apple, they don't buy ETFs, they don't buy Facebook. They go online with some and, and find some you know, obscure Canadian biotech startup that's going to cure uh, some, some exotic rat disease, right? And they think that's going to be the next big thing. And it's, it's totally normal. And I know this because I've done like, Every single investment, um, investment uh, uh, mistake in the book, right? And then I came back to what I started with, which was saving. I was saving fiat, then I was saving gold, then I did all the mistakes, and now I save Bitcoin. But I still hold gold, actually. So I'm not like 100% out of gold. Mm -hmm. I, because because if Bitcoin is successful, I can I can you know. Uh, I can live with, uh, with 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 the purchasing power loss compared to gold. And gold is still going to be better than you know the euro or whatever. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for a hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe 
maybe even your citizenship set up. You have to talk to the Bitcoin way. If you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. The, the overall point uh, that I uh, tried to make is like, will, will all the store of value or like the majority of the store of value then go to Bitcoin when most will discover what we both discovered? And we'll, well, I don't know if it's going to be the majority, but it's going to be a very, very big part. Yes, I do. I, this is this is something I do believe in. Yeah, because it is just for this, it's better. If we can, if we all agree on 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 um, on gold and on real estate and on the stock market, it is better. And if you look at the stock market, um, um, you know, in terms of M two money supply growth it's not even it's a flat it's flat anyway mm. uh and 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 to counteract this monetary inflation a finite digital asset that finds adoption is the perfect solution it's literally the perfect solution so i i do think that we that that a large part of the store of value especially the future store of value so i don't even know about whatever already is in the other assets right but um you know young people Grew up who grew up in a digital world will understand this way better, um, and yeah, yeah, I believe it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go there. And this is this is also why BlackRock has done this, right? But why they also now have the ETF? No, they don't care. You want to buy Bitcoin? Nice, we have an ETF for that. You want to buy real estate? We also have an ETF for that. You want to buy the S and P five hundred? We have an ETF for that. You can stay within, you know. And the perfect, I mean, it's 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 a money printing machine. They mm. get money for holding my Bitcoin. Now, of course, I know that it's also bad to not hold your own Bitcoin. Absolutely no question. But that's another d debate we can have. For people who don't want to hold their own keys, BlackRock holds their keys for them, holds their Bitcoin and gets a very little, like a small percentage. And if the price goes up, they make more money. Mm. And it, um, there's nothing really they have to do. It's like the only people they have to employ is like two guys in a room, you know, looking at the, I don't even know what they're looking at. And then the, and then the marketing department. But with the marketing, of course, we help them for free. So Larry, if you want to, if you want to, you know, send us a, a check, <laughs> yeah, you know where to find us. We're, we're doing our part for Larry Fink. <laughs> but, but it's an interesting debate, uh, self-custody. And I had this a lot of times on my podcast and uh, I... I came to this conclusion now, and, and, and maybe we can debate a little bit about that, uh, that self-custody is great as an option and everyone who has the option should do it or at least try it. Like at least even if you're like uh, 65 years old, you have a 2 million portfolio and, and you don't want to take it out, you, wa you want just to stay with BlackRock, you want to stay with your ETF, take the 200 euros uh, and buy an, 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 an bit box uh, and, and try it out, like just like move it around just for the knowledge gap. Uh, and that's really, really cool that we have that option. But the majority, will they ever do the self-custody? Then we have to, uh, of course, the debate like on the base layer is not that many, uh, much space. So there will be the people forced out of on, on second layers and, and third layers. I, well, first of all, I don't know. Right when you ask me anything about the future, obviously I don't know, but I let's let's say this: there will be considerably more people holding their own keys than there was in two thousand and seven, yeah. before Bitcoin existed. Um, the fact that it's possible for you to do this, literally the same thing that um, a nation state would do a very, very big fund would do, a bank would do, um, a huge hedge fund would do, uh, a very rich person would do. Like literally the same thing. If gold is a little bit similar, you can hold gold in your own, but but it's 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 there is a little bit of more hurdles than for the rich person or for the for the government or whatever, right? Mm. Because the government, 
you know, they have their their gold vaults, right? And and they, you know, I have to pay for that for, for the security with my tax money, right? Um, and actually, when you look at it, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, it's actually better for the individual than for the government or the company, because for the government and the company, you have to find a solution that makes sense with regards to single seek, multi seek. Um, how do you how do you actually handle that, right? Um, this is why you know an ETF is so brilliant because the, the like it's it's what it's, it's what uh, Lil Alden said, right? She said it, it, the ETF is is an API that the fiat system can plug into, and she's mm. absolutely right. There's two ways to do this: either you teach everyone within the fiat system how to hold their own keys, you change lots of laws, um, and how to hold like f- how does a company like Michael Saylor hold their own like their own keys and their own coins, right? Um, they did it because they understood that if they go first and if they go over these hurdles with custodians, then they are going to be quicker than others. But if you already have a treasury system, if you already invest into ETFs or in stocks or whatever, right, then you just now you just have to press the button. There's no questions anymore. And for this, they are not like a, a, a company. A company should, like, it, there's very, very good reasons why a company would not be holding their own keys. Because if somebody, if BlackRock loses the keys, I can go to court and sue BlackRock. If I lose my own keys, it's not, not a good look, right? Um, or even, and I, I, and I get, and make myself, uh, you know, people can attack me, right? There's, a, there's an attack angle there. So it's, it's very, very understandable. Um, and, and, and that's what I said about the fiat money system as well. If the fiat money system still exists, it's because it it, it still um, delivers a solution, right? Mm-hmm. If the bank system still exists, it still gives a solution. There's no way p- this stuff is just forced upon people. Fiat money is is a great solution to many problems, especially compared to um, what we have 400 years ago at uh, when the Bank of Amsterdam was founded, because because uh, merchants from all over Europe would come to Amsterdam and exchange goods for currencies, and they would have more currencies that that, that you know Binance offers today, right? And then the bank, the the, the government of Amsterdam said, "Guys, guys, let, let you know, let's we, let us do it." And yes, of course, um, you know the government uh, 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 didn't do a very good job with fiat money. I will give you that. Right. Even like when you look at the euro, the euro was supposed to be the best, like the best version of fiat money we've ever seen, was the the Deutsche Mark, uh, and and they just destroyed it. Right. They just gave it away, and now and then they put it into the euro, and now it's it's gone. Poof. Like like in the in the South Park mm-hmm. thing, it's not, <laughs> and it's gone. Right. Um, so yeah. So 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 Bitcoin is way better, but I don't know about the future. Um, I, I don't like, it's very hard to, to see a world where there's no like national currencies. I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter. But with the whole, with regard to holding your own keys, if you were a Bitcoiner, you should hold your own keys. Should you hold 100% of your own keys? Should you, or should you have maybe have like a fail safe where somebody else holds, you know, because life is not black and white, right? I can, I can do seven different custody solutions for my Bitcoin. And I think that's probably the best idea because if two fail, you still have this, the five others. Mm. But I'm not an expert. There's like people who are way better than, at this than I am, you know? So. Absolutely. And, it, and the ETF is interesting for me because there's this one side where we say like it's the most successful ETF launch ever. Of because, of, because of inflation. Because of inflation, of course, uh, but the price, uh, like I get a lot of comments, uh, like, "Oh, why does the f- price not move up?" Or I was uh, like a week ago in a space, and people say, uh, uh, "Someone come like, like, why does the price that is not at 100k or 200k?" I think it's also like uh, expectation. I think Samsung Ma was one of the guys who said, like, in a few weeks when this uh, ETF uh, launched, then it will be at a million. Uh, he had some some price targets. I don't remember if it was him, but. Uh, uh, do, you know, there's you, always one guy with a price target, you know, there's always guys with <laughs> price targets and the price targets are never or almost never lower than the current price. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting after price target 12K. <laughs> no, no, sure. I mean, there are idiots like Peter Zaihan who think it's yeah. going to go negative, right? Yeah. Um, but, but, um, but are you disappointed with the ETF launch from a price perspective? No. Or does this come later? No, no, I'm not disappointed. No. I, I, first of all, the price is the price, right? There's a hundred different factors uh, uh, what the price is doing, and I don't know. In media, it's always funny, right? When you when you when the price is moving in media, 
the, the, the journalists and uh, you know the, the newspapers immediately find a reason, right? Mm. Gold demand is up due to the tensions in the Middle East, right? <laughs> Maybe it's the, the Indian wedding season, I don't know, right? It, 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 there's always one reason and, and it's completely stupid. The price goes up if there's more demand, um, and the price goes down if there's less demand. That is it. That's the whole story. And 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 I th that's where I go back to the power law thing because I think that Giovanni, who, who came up with the concept, is very right. He says that that basically, even in order to go to a six-figure uh, Bitcoin price within the next year, we need this money, this inflow, right? It's not like the Bitcoin price just goes up magically because we now have ETFs. There is the, the, the idea that most of the people who who bought the ETFs are actually, you know, old old fashioned Bitcoiners who now roll their 401ks into Bitcoin, in the, in the ETFs. And, and then there's the other idea that the institutional investors aren't really here yet. Partly they are, partly they are not. Um, it's just that, that, you know, we went up from what? 30,000, 40,000 uh, after we heard about the ETF to about 70,000 and mm. now it's going to go sideways. I mean, what do you want? If it's going to, if, if it goes to 200 within two, two, two months in the summer of 2024, then the market is overbought and it just will collapse again and, and you cannot do anything. Like, um, if it goes up too fast, it will come down and it will go up too fast at the end and it will come down again. Um, but, but, I'm not disappointed. No, I'm, 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 I think it's a very, very, uh, clear statement by the, um, financial giants of the world that Bitcoin is a real thing. And I think that should be enough, uh, for, for most people. I it's enough it. for me. I love it a lot. Um, before we go into end routine, I have one more question that I, uh, just had in my head. Um, when we talked about the fiat uh, thing before, and I remember it now, um, what is the worst aspect of fiat? You, you studied it uh, a long time. You're now in Bitcoin. Uh, what, what is for you the worst aspect of, of the fiat world or the fiat monetary system? The worst aspect of the fiat system as we know it today is that it lies to you. It, 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 it makes you believe that, you know, your stocks go up when they're actually flat, that you um, are, are smart for buying the house be, be, be when it's actually flat, um, that there is something wrong with you because you cannot make enough money to um, um, care for your family, you know. Um, there's something wrong with you because you don't make as much money as the guy next door does, right? Even though he's, you know, eyeballs into debt because he won't, just wants to impress you, right? Um, the, 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 the worst thing about the fiat system is that it keeps you in this, in this perpetual um, loop of, of insufficiency, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and you can never escape it because, because uh, or, or almost never escape it. Um, and you have to work hard in terms of being an investor to get out of it. And this takes enormous amounts of energy uh, that could otherwise be used for other endeavors like science or arts, you know? Um, so that's the worst part. And and the, the worst effect is that it takes the money from the poor and gives it to the rich. Mm. And, it's, and it's the complete opposite of what, um, you know, people who, who, who complain about this will tell you that it's it's capitalism's fault or it's the even the market economy's fault right um when it's the complete opposite it's because we have a centralized monetary system that just doesn't work <laughs> um and 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 it gets worse you know the, now we are we're at a point where the only solution that politicians have is more money right so it, they make it worse with every crisis it just gets worse um and and without bitcoin i would be you know very depressed right now because I really wouldn't know what to do. Um, but the fact is that, you know, with the information revolution, the computer and all that stuff, it's it makes sense that something would come up to solve this actually very solvable problem. Um, it's just that, that, that it was solved by fiat money and then fiat money was taken, you know, by the governments and central banks and turned into something that's really, really not very, you know, productive. So, so I hope that that was um, concise enough for the worst thing about fiat money. Uh, yeah, it, it was really good. I always uh, explain uh, the difference between fiat and, and, and the Bitcoin standard, like fiat is running in mud, 
uh, and you can still run, you can still do something, but something drags you down a little bit. It's mm. a little bit harder to run. Uh, and, and running on a Bitcoin standard is like just running on a, a solid street. Because we also have this like low time preference and I feel like some Bitcoiners using low time preference as an excuse to be lazy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the low time preference thing is, is, is it's great when you discover it that it's actually possible. So one of the things that like, what I said about fiat money is also that you cannot have a low time preference because it just it's not possible. Mm. So that's on a on a on a on a um, societal uh, level um, is very bad because that's when you get things like like um, um, you know you squander your resources. You have fast fashion, fast food, fast everything, um, and of course you have a, a, a very very powerful nomenclatura within the fiat system, even within the corporate fiat system, who sell you the fast fashion, the fast food, and who don't want to change anything about it because they are making good money, right? Um, so so I don't know if 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 um, the, the the time preference it's actually we go with Bitcoin we're going to discover a lot of a lot, many things about time preference I think and 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 because I'm a little bit older than you I already like I have already crossed the the the, the horizon and I know many like very young Bitcoiners between twenty and forty who are like ah we save everything you still own chairs you short Bitcoin right and I get it I get it you know um, and I actually I. I um, I get it, but but it's not. This is not a permanent thing, right? It's, in the end, Bitcoin is 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 just a number on the screen. If you like, the 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 real challenge is not to get out of the rat race. The real challenge is is what are you gonna do with your life afterwards? Mm. What are you gonna do with your time, right? And we are only at the start of figuring that out. I think because. Because there are like there are signs that people are starting to to think about this, right? When you look on YouTube, you know you have all these motivational gurus, right? Who will tell you you do this, you do that, you build your business, you know. And there is good guys and there is very bad guys um, mm -hmm. who do that. But there is definitely a demand for this, and part of this is because of fiat, because people don't know what to do. But I think the other part is that some people are starting to figure out that there is a way to live your life that is um, not driven by the fear, like by the inflation machine. And a lot of, a, a, a big part of those is Bitcoiners, but not only. I think that there are other people who have, you know, maybe, you know, have a job that pays enough, you know, if you're an influencer, right? If you if, if you have a big following or whatever, um, you're, you're already out of the red race. So there's other ways to get out of the red race than Bitcoin. That's what mm. I'm saying. Um, and, 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 and then you have to realize what am I going to do? And, you know, that's, that's actually the question. And I think we're still at the very, very early, but we're not early with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is already 15 years old, but we're very, very, very early when it comes to the consequences of Bitcoin. Cause boy, it could be one of the consequences when like we have a Bitcoin standard or like most people save the money in Bitcoin, therefore they get to a stage where they can uh, have more and more and they have more and more time. Can we get to a point where we live in abundance? <laughs> uh, I mean, compared to any part of human history, we, we already live in abundance. Uh -huh. But there are many things that are very bad about the system today. I mean, we still have poverty. Why? Why do we have poverty? Why? Why is where there's we there people flying to the to the moon like on a private jet, right? And, and at the same time we have poverty. There's something yeah. is wrong. Something is not going right, right? Um, but the whole abundance thing, it's. I mean, I don't know. I, hmm. I don't know. You know, maybe it, it it depends on your definition of abundance, right? It's like like because today we live a life. That's on, 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 on par with like the richest people 150 years ago, maybe, yeah. not, maybe not like maybe 200 years ago, uh, but our life is pretty good, I think. But, but, and, 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 and this is thanks to, let's make no mistake. This is thanks to the market economy and in, in parts to in here in Europe, we do have a social system that is very, you know, in theory, it's very good as long as the market economy is bigger than the rest. You know, if, as long as there's more money made than spent. But mm. we know from Hayek that, and, and from Mises, then, you know, it, it takes a while, but it's never, it, it's, it's very hard to, to, to hold that, right? Because mm. you, you can print the money and then it just goes poof. 
Um, and, and this is what we see now. So abundance, I don't know. Uh, there is a, there like, let's just say that, that I see this with, with people within the Bitcoin space. And I really believe that we don't know, like what people like are even capable to do because because their potential is not tapped. Mm. And I think that Bitcoin is only a very, very small part because we see this from a Western and rich perspective. But what about people in Africa and South America and Southeast Asia, right? So they, first they need to get plugged into a hard money standard, right? That, that's how I explain it to normies sometimes. I say, imagine the whole world on the DMARC, mm. right? But better, that's Bitcoin, right? It's a hard money standard that anybody can plug into at any time. Um, and that's completely mind boggling. And, and like, like I said, we're only at the beginning of the, of the consequences. So one of the consequences would be that we see the potential for, for growth coming out of Africa, coming out of Asia and South America. Um, but again, I don't even know how long that might take. It might take decades to, 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 you can see it on the personal, it's very small level already, but until you see the positive effects, I don't know, it will take time. It will definitely take time. And uh, I have a thousand more questions on that topic. It's really interesting to talk with you. Um, but I think we are around that one hour mark, even though my, my watch is they <laughs> stopped working. It's, it's, it's stopped working. Is it's, it, it's too, still at 12. That's, that's, that's a very, that's a way of low time preference, right? You, you don't buy a new, the new watch. So it's, it's, uh, no, it's only no, right twice a day. No, no time for batteries. Uh, no money for batteries. <laughs> <laughs> it's always 12. It's always time for food. Um, my end routine consists of two questions. The one question is always the same and the other question is always from the previous guest. And the first question is, uh, what are you currently passionate about besides Bitcoin? And I'm always aiming with that question to find out more about Bitcoiners so we can learn from each other and, and see others, uh, other, uh, effect, uh, other aspects of their lives also. Golf. <laughs> The beautiful and very, very agonizing game uh, of golf, where you hit a, a white ball, mostly white balls, with a stick around uh, a field of grass. That's what I'm. What I'm. Yeah, it's it's a it's not a love hate relationship, but it's 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 proof of work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I always love when when you describe sports like that because when you describe, for example, swimming, you just jump in the water. Till you hit a wall and then you drive back and yeah. did you hit the wall and it's, a, it's really interesting so the thing the thing with golf is that <clears throat> this is something that that you know people go crazy about um the ball doesn't move so when you play soccer or you play you play baseball you play basketball you play any kind of of, of game with a ball the ball is constantly moving so you are always reacting right you never there's no there's no time to think Mm. Right, you you learn. It's like it's like a second. It's like your nature, right? A good tennis player. Right? With golf, you have time to think, mm. and the problem is, it's never good to think in sports. Um, and 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 you learn a lot about like things like the subconscious, right? When you when you stand there and you say, okay, there is a lake, do not hit the ball into the lake. There is a one hundred percent chance that the ball goes into the lake. You have to learn to think. I'm gonna put the ball next to the lake. Because you always have to be positive. The brain mm -hmm. does not understand uh, neg uh, negation, right? It doesn't understand when you say no. And then you realize that the, the same applies for life. And it's very, very cheesy. It's very cheesy. That, that, you know. But there's another thing that Bitcoiners might like. I saw this on the short. They said, you know why rich people play golf? Mm -hmm. Because they leave their cell phones at home and talk about illegal stuff on the golf course. It's very, very hard for surveillance to, to get you on a very, very open field, right? Um, now, Bitcoiners, of course, don't do any illegal stuff, but we also don't like um, being surveilled all the time. Um, so maybe maybe my subconscious also feels a little bit freer on, on, on the golf course. I should try leaving the cell phone at home as well. But of course, for security reasons or whatever, you never do. <laughs> I don't have anything, you know, secret to talk about anyway. Yeah, uh, and I think it's uh, there's something beautiful to, beautiful to it, just being in nature, just be yes. not uh, always on the computer. And yes. You're, you're getting, you, you go out, you literally touch grass. And actually I, I like in the last couple of, of um, Bitcoin conferences, I realized, especially, you know, coming from the UK and, and the US, there's many golfers in Bitcoin. 
Um, and we are now doing the Bitcoin Golf Association, the BGA. Mm. Um, it basically, it's just a tweet that I sent out, but that's how, <laughs> that's how projects start, right? So if anybody is a golfer, hit me up. We'll do like a Telegram group or something at the next conference. We can do, we can go play golf. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, great. Um, the end routine is always the previous guest ask a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and we touched on a little bit, but not really. Do you think that the uh, halving is priced in? And uh, you, you can tell by the question that we talked a lot about the price movements in the last episode. <laughs> well, the halving that's already happened. Yeah, the, the halving, uh, he asked the question, the halving uh, that already happened is that Uh, is still priced in or is from the halving the movements coming? Everything is always priced in. Mm. There's also like one of those, those like, um, uh, it, it's, there's no secret that there is a halving, right? There's like literally like the, the world media is falling over themselves, you know, covering, <laughs> oh, this event in Bitcoin is happening right now and it's going to send the price. No, it's not sending the price. <laughs> if, if you want to price in the halving, you should have done this 15 years ago. Um, no, there is no the, the the halving gets gets is 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 a challenge for miners, right? It's something you have to adapt to. I think that when you look at the the transaction costs, so I think that the that the the miners like the, the importance of their part of the transaction fees will rise relative to to um, the block subsidy, right? Mm. Um, that yes, but is it priced in? Of course, it's priced in. Everything is always priced in. You know, there is no like, besides real so-called black swan events that, you know, just happened. There is no, you know, everything that's known is priced in. Mm. Yeah, I also see it like that. It's uh, The question is really interesting because it's already past that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, I have to talk with him more about that because <laughs> I loved it a lot, uh, the, the conversation. Um, before we end the podcast, uh, where can people find you? Where can people ask you and, and uh, ask you questions? So um, I'm on, on, on X, not for the next couple of months, so I try to stay off it during summer. Um, for English stuff, it's the easiest way to find me is fixthemoney.net. Mm. That's my, my sub stack. I do um, a newsletter there where I write about the stuff that I talked about right now. Mm. And, and I also do occasional episodes uh, whenever I, I come across an interesting Bitcoiner to talk to. We'll also publish this there so we can, we can uh, show people your podcast. Um, and then um, my, my German stuff is was Bitcoin bringt. Um, mm. That's the podcast. It's also on, on YouTube um, and on like websites or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find it. Uh, you can find it online. Perfect. And thank you, Nico, for being on my show and for everyone watching and listening. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye. <laughs>